Hello and welcome to the Beefy Tech channel. It's a pleasure to have you here. Today's video is going to be focused on hardware troubleshooting your Windows 10 and 11 desktop PCs. I'll be using my own system as an example, which has a Ryzen 7 5800X3D, DDR4 3800MHz CL14 RAM with tuned sub timings and an RTX 3080 10GB with a slight overclock on it. The troubleshooting shown today is universal and will work on all platforms. Alright, let's get things started. First things first, we must identify the problem component in your computer. Therefore, you will have to go to your browser and follow along. Google OCCT and click the first search result that appears. After you've done that, go in the top right hand corner, not all the way, but here on the download link and click download. For all intensive purposes, I have already downloaded OCCT. You will just have to follow the download process and we will go from there. Regardless, now you can open up OCCT given you've already downloaded it, and this is what you should see. Now it will be a bit different depending on which uh, pop-up it puts you to, but OCCT is a program aimed at test benching and stress testing all of the components in your PC. If there's a way to find out if something's wrong with your computer, this is it right here. My personal recommendation of how you should address this is essentially do one test or well, one stress test component. Test your CPU, <clears throat> test your memory, test your GPU. This right here is for the CPU, this is for your RAM, this is for your graphics card. And if you want to test just specifically the VRAM on the graphics card, you use this one. You can also test to see how much power your computer uses here, but this is not going to be for troubleshooting, just for your own interests. Take them one by one and run them for approximately 10 minutes each. This is the best way to see if you've got any faults in your computer, and you can even run them for longer if you want to double check that your PC is indeed fault, uh, not faulty. If you do end up getting errors from either your CPU, memory, or GPU, you will then be able to identify which component is the faulty component and go from there. Now I will run you through how to identify the issues with each specific component. So. If you're looking to check if your CPU is the problem, you're going to want to run this test. Leave everything default, it doesn't matter particularly. You can start running the test, it'll give you this support us thing where you just have to wait for 10 seconds for it to start. But what you want to be looking for whenever you're testing the CPU is your temperatures. And not only that, errors, because that will come up if your CPU is unstable. So right now, everything is going to be very slow on my computer because the CPU is being used to its fullest. But I can just click over here. And I can look at all of my temperatures and see if absolutely anything is wrong with my current CPU. Now, I've got a 5800X3D and it has a slight OC on it, albeit not in the traditional sense. It's overvolted slightly, specifically so it can run a high infinity fabric and high uh, and low latency RAM. But anyway, right here on the left side, you would start seeing errors if your CPU was not in good shape. Let's say a, a pin was bent or the CPU is having issues of any sort, you would see it right here, or your temperatures would be absurdly high and you'd be thermal throttling. And that's how you'd identify if your CPU had any issues. If indeed you're getting errors or your CPU is severely overheating as a result of doing said stress test within OCCT, you're going to want to repaste it in case it's overheating. And that means removing the CPU cooler, adding, wiping away the old thermal paste and putting new thermal paste in, and if you're getting errors, you're also going to want to fully reset the BIOS, reseat the CPU, and make sure there's no bent pins on it. Alright, now moving on to your RAM. So you will go to the memory tab, and you'll let it run at 80%. You don't want it to run at 100, because otherwise you won't be able to do anything else within Windows, not even switch between these tabs up here. So you're going to want to start running the memory test. Yet again, it will give this 10 second countdown timer, unless you become a Patreon supporter but what you want to watch out for memory isn't specifically heat because unfortunately not all memory modules come with the um, temperature checks i don't even know if mine do to be entirely honest you know they don't by the looks of it but what you're going to want to look for is outright errors you're going to want to run this for 10 to 30 minutes and see if any errors appear it depends on if you're running any custom uh, timings or if you're just running xmp or if you're not even running xmp but obviously you should be running xmp and if it does come up that you're simply running XMP and there's still errors appearing here, you're going to want to go into your BIOS 
and slightly up the voltage from the rated manufacturer setting. Let's assume your voltage is at 1.35 within the BIOS, you're going to want to put it at 1.37 or 1.38, maybe even 1.4, depending on what type of RAM you have. Remember, unless you have Samsung B die, doing that might not outright work and doing more than 136 on a 135 kit may not even work. So just keep that in mind, but you're going to want to look for errors in this bottom left corner and if any appear, go and adjust your timings and your voltages within the BIOS for RAM. Alright, and for the third and final stress test, you're going to want to do your graphics card. It's going to be the same story where you click down here and you wait for the 10 second timer to go down and you're going to be wanting to look for crashes, errors or heat. If your graphics card is overheating, it will most likely affect its stability. And if it crashes in this test, it's most likely unstable as is. Let's assume you're not running any OC, and if you are and it crashes, you want to dial down your OC. If there's no OC and you still crash, you might want to try go a bit under the OC and see what happens. I've often even seen though that the graphics card is not seated in properly and that's what actually causes artifacting even outside of games. So my recommendation is if you're having any issues with this test, reseat your graphics card, turn down all of your overclocks and even try go a bit below with the voltage to see if that helps your stability. Alright, and if you're suspecting that one of your hard drives or SSDs is actually the issue and it's none of the other components, you do have another solution and it's called Crystal Mark 3D. Well, Crystal Disk Mark actually. And what you do is you go to Google, click on it and then go to download and get the zip file. Follow through the entire download process. Once you have extracted all of the documents from here, you can just click and extract all on one of them. Just click on Disk Mark 64. Click yes to open and now you have an application with which you can test your specific drives to see how they're performing and how much life they have left in them. You just click all and it will run a test for all of your drives to let you know in what performance state they are. I'll get back to you when the test is over. Alright, I got bored of waiting and just let it do the reads. This is how it looks. If you're gonna have any issues, it would definitely let you know as your read and writes would be significantly below the advertised speeds. And you can also double check your writes, but I was not patient enough. As a final note, I would like to mention that it is always important to double check that you have plugged in absolutely everything correctly, as even if you do believe you have, sometimes it just makes an extra click and you're like, ah, that's what it was. So I do recommend double checking everything there. And reseating RAM, reseating CPU and reseating GPU is a good way to double check that your hardware is actually working properly. And it's in fact a software related issue and not hardware. Obviously, OCCT is extremely helpful to detecting the issue, but fixing it is a bit more of a self-involved process where you're going to have to plug things in and plug things out to make sure they're actually working once you have confirmed where the fault is at with OCCT. Thank you for watching today's video, and I hope to see you again soon. Please subscribe, like, leave a comment if you have any questions, and I hope you enjoy the new mic quality. I did upgrade the microphone as I want to take this a bit more seriously, but with that said, Thank you and goodbye.